there's scientific evidence that high doses of the vitamin biotin B7 may be effective in some people with progressive MS, but the data are a little bit mixed and there are a few safety concerns as well. So let's take a look at some of these research studies today. Let's have some fun. I posted a poll on Twitter asking people if they had tried high-dose biotin 300 milligrams daily for multiple sclerosis symptoms, and about 27% of people who responded yes or no said they had some kind of improvement in their symptoms, and we'll see how well this corresponds with the actual published data. By the way, I want to give the caveat that even a supplement such as biotin does have potential risks, so you should talk to your own provider and not take medical advice just from a YouTube video. I intend this for informational purposes only. But if you think this video is informative, please go ahead and click like and subscribe to my channel for videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. So no one knows exactly what biotin does for multiple sclerosis, but it's a cofactor in various metabolic enzymes. If you focus on the gray lines here, you see all the steps in metabolism where biotin is an important cofactor. So it's important in three entry points into the Krebs cycle, and it's also part of the synthesis of fatty acids, one of the initial steps in fatty acid synthesis. And one of the hypotheses about progressive multiple sclerosis is that there's a dysfunction of the mitochondria, the little organelles within in the cells that produce energy, and so perhaps people with multiple sclerosis are in need of greater doses of biotin than the average person in order to get normal mitochondrial function. Now one common thing I see is that people frequently take the wrong dose of biotin. The dose that's been used in multiple sclerosis is a ridiculously high dose. 300 milligrams. You could never obtain this type of dose in your diet. So people will ask, what, what in my diet has biotin? Don't even bother. You might as well just take the supplement because you'll never get the right dose because it's such a ridiculously high dose. So please note the difference between milligrams, mg, which is one thousandth of a gram, and micrograms, mcg, which is one millionth of a gram. So this product to the right, biotin 300 micrograms, mcg, is only one one thousandth of the correct dose. Obviously, it's going to do nothing for multiple sclerosis. Another common dose would be 5,000 micrograms or 5 milligrams, which is, again, only 1 60th of a dose. So you can't really get a prescription for this. You can't get it over the counter. You're going to have to get it online. There are sources of this, some are which are very inexpensive. I'm not going to endorse a particular product. Now, it all started with this unblinded French pilot study in people with primary progressive MS and secondary progressive MS, published in 2015. There were only 23 people. It was completely unblinded. They had an average follow-up of nine months, and they used different doses between 100 and 300 milligrams a day. And they had a lot of different outcomes. For instance, visual evoke potentials, which is an electrophysiologic test looking at the rate of conduction through the optic nerve. They looked at MR spectroscopy, which is a multimodal MRI test looking at metabolism in the brain. They looked at visual field tapes and they did videotapes of patients walking and saw if there was improvement. And believe it or not, 21 out of 23 or 91 percent had some improvement in something. Now a lot of these tests aren't very clinically meaningful. What does it matter if the visual evoke potential test improves if there's no improvement in vision? But still this is just a pilot proof of concept study and so it is very interesting. And just to show one example of the improvement, this is an individual who had a very severe visual field defect. So we're looking at Humphrey's visual fields exams, and you can see from December 2010, this person had very severe loss of vision in the left visual field. And this corresponds with a lesion in the right parietal occipital lobe. And so they had this deficit for a long time between December 2010 and January 2012, and then they received high-dose biotin and started getting better. You can see the left upper visual field started improving, and then after a while, even the left lower visual field started improving a little bit. This is just one example that was easy to show visually. Now, there was also a randomized trial in France where they had 154 subjects, some with secondary progressive MS, some with primary progressive MS, and they had varying ranges of disability between 4.5 to 7 on the expanded disability status score scale. I have a separate video if you want to learn more about this disability scale, but basically an EDSS of 6 means that you need a cane to walk 100 meters. An EDSS of 6.5 means that a walker is required, and someone with an EDSS of 7 can only walk about 5 meters or less, even with assistance. 
Now, they did a one-year randomized trial where some of the patients got biotin and some got placebo, and then they did one-year extension where everyone got the biotin, even if they were initially randomized to placebo. And they looked at a couple of different things. One was the EDSS, and if you had an EDSS less than six, you had to improve by a full point on the scale. But if you had an EDSS of six or more, you only had to improve by 0.5. And the reason for this is that a 0.5 difference in EDSS doesn't really mean that much for people with lower disability, but it means a lot if you have an EDSS of over six or of six or more. And that's because of the nonlinearity of the scale. So to succeed, you had to have either that or a 20% decrease in the time 25 foot walk. In other words, you had to walk 20% faster. And here are the results. This is just the double blind phase, just the first year. And you can see that in the placebo group, no one improved, zero people. But in the people who are randomized to MD-1003, which is the pharmaceutical drug biotin, high-dose biotin, 12.6% improved, so about one in eight people. So most people didn't benefit, but there seemed to be a small number of people who responded to the treatment. And this was statistically significant, even though a relatively small number of people responded. Now, if you look at the extension phase, you can see these are the people at month 18 and month 24 who improved. So after being initially randomized to placebo, these people were switched over to biotin. And at about six months, month 18, 7.1% did get some benefit. And then if you follow all the way to month 24, about 11.9% got some improvement. And then the number of people who were initially randomized to biotin who sustained that improvement was about the same even after two years. So it suggests that no one improved if they got randomized to placebo, but then if you give them biotin later, some of them improve. Again, a small minority of people, but definitely some. Now, if you look at the 13 people who improved, who were originally randomized to biotin, there's quite a wide range of ages. Most of them were male rather than female. I'm not sure why. This was both primary and secondary progressive MS. They had MS for varying lengths of time, and they had a wide range of disability levels. And you can see that most of them improved in the EDSS, and only four of them improved, excuse me, five of them improved in the time 25-foot walk, and some of them improved in both. And you can see some of them were not taking disease-modifying therapy, but some were, such as mycophenolate mofetil, interferon, cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, for example. Now, they also did an indirect comparison to placebo groups in other trials. And if you look at the EDSS and the people who were initially randomized to biotin, you can see that over two years, they stayed about the same. Maybe slightly worse, but really approximately the same. Whereas if you look at all these other placebo groups in different clinical trials, they did get worse over the period of two years, maybe by about 0.4 on average in the EDSS scale with a lot of difference. So there seems to be, this is an indirect comparison with different clinical trials, but there seemed to be some prevention of disability progression in people getting biotin. And if you look at the people who were initially randomized to placebo, they got worse over the first year, the yellow line, but then they stayed the same once they got biotin after the next year. So this looks very promising. However, unfortunately, there were some studies where biotin looked to be ineffective. For example, this is a French open-label study of progressive MS published in 2019. There were 178 subjects, average age 52, and the average EDSS was 6.1. In other words, the typical person could walk, but they needed a cane to walk 100 meters. And you can see, if you look at various different markers, there was really no benefit. For instance, this is the EDSS. You can see that they worsened prior to the trial. This is 12 months prior to getting biotin and then went to the start of getting biotin. But they continued to worsen even in the next year after getting biotin. If you look at time 25 foot walk, it looks about the same, but actually they did get slightly worse on average. If you look at the nine hole peg test, which is sort of a test of upper extremity function, putting pegs into holes, they stayed approximately the same over 12 months. And if you look at the SDMD or single digit modality test, they stayed approximately the same. This is a measure of cognitive function. There was also a six month randomized trial looking at visual loss in people with prior optic nerve damage. And if you look at high dose biotin versus placebo, there was absolutely no difference. 
And then this was a poster presented on a one-year open label study with high-dose biotin. And they actually reported that even in people with progressive MS, relapses seem to increase. In the year prior to getting biotin, the average number of relapses was only 0.1. In other words, an average of one relapse every 10 years. But then in the year of getting the treatment, the number of relapses almost tripled to 0.27 on average per year. So this was very concerning, and a lot of people were afraid to give biotin after this study. There was also a very recent report from the company that makes MD-1003. Again, this is pharmaceutical-grade high-dose biotin, which is MedDay Pharmaceuticals. And they did a huge study with 642 people with progressive MS over 15 months, and they reported the study was completely negative. There was no change in EDSS and no change in time 25-foot walk. Now let's talk briefly about the potential side effects. Although biotin is extremely safe, generally speaking, there are some laboratory tests that use the enzyme biotinidase. And so taking a lot of biotin can sort of throw off the assay and give you a falsely abnormal or normal laboratory test. Some examples include troponin, which is a cardiac enzyme, and it's used to diagnose a heart attack. So even though biotin doesn't cause heart attacks, it could cause a falsely abnormal result. And there was actually a case report of someone who had a heart attack, but had a negative troponin because they were taking high-dose biotin. This is also true for thyroid stimulating hormone, a test used to test for thyroid disease, and sometimes even for vitamin D levels. Now, biotin has a very short half-life, only about two hours, but it's recommended to stop biotin three days or 72 hours prior to getting any blood test just in case. Also, there was some concern that biotin could increase relapses. I think this is a little bit dubious, and I haven't really seen this in clinical practice, and it wasn't really corroborated by the other studies. For instance, in the French randomized studies, the rate of relapse was actually lower in people taking biotin, only 4.9% versus 7.8% on placebo. And then in the uh, effectiveness study, the rate of relapses was only 0.02 per year, extremely low, compared to 0.05 in the 12 months prior to the study. So I don't know if I really buy this increased relapses. The one other thing I found is there was a single patient with multiple sclerosis who developed worsening weakness while taking biotin. And they thought it may have been due to just progression of multiple sclerosis, but in fact the patient had a muscle disease which was a form of myopathy, and it was mimicking sort of an enzyme deficiency, and they ended up stopping biotin and the symptoms improve. Now this is probably extremely rare, but if you're getting worse while taking biotin, it would make sense to go ahead and stop it. So what are my thoughts? Certainly, I don't think there's really strong evidence for biotin, but honestly, it's very safe, and perhaps some people benefit from it. So me personally, I have nothing against it. I think it's perfectly reasonable to try it for one year, uh, but you should be careful about the laboratory test issue, and if it's really not benefiting you after one year, I would recommend going ahead and stopping it. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, please post in the comments below.